name is JC Boggs Faulkner, and I'm here doing a demo from the Heads and Hands issue of Ply. Um, it's a carding demo. Uh, Emily Wilshide's carding smooth color transitions. Um, I think it's like page 16 through page 198 because it's a really long article. Um, part of that is because it's beautiful and we really wanted to show the beauty of the pictures. Um, but I'm going to try my best to demo uh, what she does in that article. The parts that I found the most challenging to take photos of, I wanted to show live and um, just kind of see what it's like to go through the instructions myself um, and do it. And I'm going to take you along for the ride. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here are my colors. Um, she does a lot more colors than this and in a more precise way, but this is kind of what I had on hand. It's a dark brown, um, which honestly I wouldn't use for this, except that I was out of town for two days and my cats found it. Um, so dark brown, kind of a lighter mix of browns, greens and yellows, and some blues. Uh, so those are my main color sections. Uh, according to the article, the first thing I have to do is card all of this together, all of this together, until I have four kind of well-carded bats. So I'm going to start with that. Okay, so I'm putting my Stroush out. Um, it's the Petite, so it's pretty small. Uh, I have a great Clemens & Clemens, much bigger carder, and a Mad Batter, but um, both are a little bigger and I had trouble getting them in the frame. So we're gonna do this little one. And I think we're gonna start with, let's start with the dark brown, shall we? So I'm realizing now that the colors in this brown uh, are great and I love them, but that since everything else is mixed, the solid brown that I started with might be too solid. So I'm going to take, since it was too full anyway, I'm going to take one of these bundles and put it with this. Uh, and then we'll split that in half and cart it together in a little bit. But I'm going to put that to the side so that we don't use it. And I'm going to keep going. Okay, now we're going to move into the greens and yellows. Okay. So now I have four bats. I have a green bat, I have a mixed brown bat, I have a darker kind of mixed brown bat, and I have a green bat. So now we have to do the color transitions. This is a third. This is a third. I'm gonna put these here, okay? And then a third here. A third here and a third here. Now I know that Emily um, measured all of this, but I'm trying to do it more like I would do it if I were just not doing an article. And I can already see how my math is going wrong here because clearly this bundle, main colors are gonna be smaller than these bundles, but that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to blend this together. And well, that's already together. And I'm going to blend these together. Yeah, that's 
starting together. I'm gonna blend this together. Not quite like this, but you get you get the gist, right? These are our main colors and these are our transition colors. All right, so now back to the blending board. Okay, we're gonna start with the dark brown and the mixed brown. Okay, so here are my blended vats and they're in between transition colors, right? My dark brown, my mixed, my light brown, my mixed, my green, my mixed, my blue. All right, so now I need to strip these out into smaller portions since these are like, this is eight bundles, which I might as well go ahead and make uh, four bats out of. So essentially, I need to break each of these in half. Yes, that's what I need to do. So I'm starting to feel like I made a mistake on the amount of each of these colors because I don't think I have enough fiber of each of them to, to cover the whole drum in a layer. But we'll see. If this one doesn't work, then I will put the next two together. And by that, I mean the next two bats, I'll combine their little bundles of color into one bundle so that it's twice the amount of each color. I feel like that might have been a smarter thing. All right, moment of truth. And I think it's going to be true that I did not use enough fiber in this bat because it's very tiny. So let's very carefully take it off and see what the stitch is. So here it is. You can see those stripes in there, but I just don't feel like they're thick enough. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do another one, but use twice the amount. We're going to put this one aside for right now. Okay, and here was the one I was going to do for the second, for the next one, but instead, let's double up. All right. Double the blue, double the green blue, Double the green, double the green gray, or light brown, double the light brown, double the light brown, dark brown, and double the dark brown. All right, now, this one's for real. Very thin layers. I want to try to cover the whole drum with this color. Just a thin layer of this color. Okay, I think this is it. Take this off carefully, making sure I get all the edges. Oh my gosh, it feels so good. 
way thicker than the birch one. I think there's a solid coat of each color. And if you look close, you can see that rainbow right there. Not rainbow so much as you can see our stacked colors. Okay, so here we're gonna stop for a minute. And look at this bat. Okay, so the bat has the stacked colors going this way, which, and this is the part I didn't understand until um, I had the samples in my hand and really studied it. Just being like a casual carter, I didn't really understand that this uh, was how this worked. Okay, so our stacked bat, right? So now we're going to create a bat that has a gradient that we can spin. Okay, so here it goes. Let's say we can probably, what, do two of these? Well, so here's what we do. Here's the flat bat, right? This is the blue, uh, brown, and this is the blue. And we're going to take a strip of it. Can you see where this is going? It's awesome. All right, I'm gonna take another strip of it. So I've got three strips, okay? And now, if I look at this strip, I can see the stack of colors in it. I'm gonna widen that stack this way, right? So now my bat is going the other direction. And then I'm gonna put this on the carter and cart it, right? Awesome. <laughs> See, they're excited and I don't know. I learn new things and they work. <laughs> I was kind of afraid that my demo wouldn't work. All right, let's put this on the carter. Okay, now it's time. You ready? I'm ready. All right, so let's remember this. I'm starting with the all blue close to the wall. All right, here we go. Very excited. Oh my gosh. Mm. all blue right all blue against the window so here's the next this was stripped this way all right so there's the stack of colors that we laid on the drum uh, we layered on the drum and then we split it out and now we're gonna kind of flatten it out this way very gently Emily so smart this is the best job I get to learn from amazing amazing fiber artists Okay, here we go. Layer this on top of it. So let's go ahead and take this one off and see what we think. I'll tell you what we think. We already think awesome. So beautiful. I'm going to move this a little forward so you can see it better. Okay. might be my favorite bat I've ever made. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I am in love with this. Okay, we're going to put this, oh my gosh. <laughs> we're going to put this to the side for just a few minutes, okay? 
and we're going to go ahead and put the last bits on and do something else with it. Okay, so here's bat number two. Bat number one is here, totally in love with it. Bat number two, I'm gonna attempt to diz it off. Now, to be perfectly honest, I have not done this since my master spinning class, but we're gonna give it a try because it does seem like something I should be able to do. <laughs> right, okay. A little nervous. I think I have to start, oh, maybe I don't start like that but I am gonna start with just one of the colors, okay? The all blue color, so I'm gonna just stick that back down. Stick in there. All right, and then got my handy diz here. And let's see. Put this in through there. Alrighty, righty. And here we go. Nothing like doing something on the fly, right? <laughs> I wish I hadn't pulled that off, but I did, so we're going to go with it. I am sure there are people out there I know, maybe one of them, that can do this in a much, like, <laughs> more graceful manner. But to be honest with you, I'm just so happy that I'm doing it at all. Also, look. so. Back here was just all blue. Oh, don't get it caught in there. And now the green is coming in also. This is really cool. Okay, so here's the problem, because I did that earlier. Oh no, I gotta get that caught up in there. Because I pulled that earlier, you know? So I'm sad that that is going to cause a problem. But we're gonna just glide by it like it's not. And I'll be careful when I spin that section. All right? Oh my gosh. I hope that this is as awesome to you as it is to me. Because I am seriously flabbergasted. And I don't know if I've ever used that word before. But my friends, that is what I am. Because this is lovely and amazing. So what I found, I think, in the second time where I, I hadn't pulled off the ends, it was still a little hard in that, like, section. The section over the seam. So I want to make sure that I'm getting as much as I should be getting. it's doing pretty good. I feel like I've left a little bit of that blue and I've already moved into the green and the light brown so I don't really want to go back and get it but I'm gonna be okay with that. And I'm pretty sure that you choose the hole if you know what kind of yarn you want to spin from it you choose the hole on your diz based on the diameter of the yarn you want to spin. I'm not sure I did that, because honestly, I just wanted to do this demo and I didn't have a plan for this yarn. But now that I love it so much, I think I might do a whole thing out of it. Like a whole, like a hat. We'll see how much I have, but I don't really know since I did not do the thing I should have done and measure it <laughs> or weigh it. Oh no. I feel like this is working better than I thought. And I don't need to be as anxious as I feel like I am about it. <laughs> like, it's, it's a thing that works. Oh, man, it's so cool, though. I've not done, like, a lot of color blending. And I am leaving more than probably should or more than someone that is really good at this would on the drum but my first little run at this I'm okay with it I 
I watched Roy Clemens do this once and thought it looked awesome. And, uh, well, honestly, easier. <laughs> Not that it's hard, but, you know, it's a little more taxing than I thought it would be. It's kind of always the way it is when you watch someone do something that they're really good at. Uh, it looks like it's easy. I guess that's the mark of someone being good at something, is they can make it look easy. You wouldn't want your teacher to make something look hard. Oh look, so I went through the, the dark brown and now we're to the brown uh, and blue section. So, I kind of wish I'd taken off the other bat like this, because if I'm going to make a project out of it, I, um, I want them to be the same. So, figure out what to do about that. Am I getting the salt yesterday? Don't do that. <laughs> so I have also noticed that I'm getting thinner. My my roving here is getting thinner. And I'm not sure what that is about. Maybe it's just because I'm at the end and I got thinner. I tended to pack drum carters and thin on the edges, I know. So I'm going to go ahead and take it all. Okay, so I am in love with this. I'm gonna put it here. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put this thing back through so that I can diz it too. Maybe there's a better way to do that. Maybe you can just diz it from, you know, from there, but I don't feel like that's my... A good thing for me to do. I don't want to mess it up. So I'm just going to put the whole thing back through and diz it off. I also want to just say that it's possible I could be holding this diz upside down. I think I read, I think I got an email from like a newsletter from Spinoff today saying that um, the person who wrote the article was saying that they held their diz with the concave side towards the drum carter, which means I am holding it upside down. But I do remember that it just said, the person said that um, this made it like faster and more comfortable on their other hand, so it's probably not hurting anything, but it is slightly awkward. So keep that in mind. I don't want to change it right now because I'm right in the middle of this amazing piece of roving that I love. I think I've done a way better job with this one. It's very, the color changes are more true. So here's my question. This one is generally thinner than my other one, and I used the same hole and the same fiber, but I did start it out with a smaller piece of fiber, and I guess that that, and that makes sense to me for a little while, but I'm surprised that it stayed thinner for the whole distance of it. Oh no, got a little more, another strand in there and it's not going to come. All right, let's see if we can connect it, shall we? But we're going to start here and I really want it to also be connected to here. So let's go ahead and turn this around and see if it makes more sense that way. But it comes out this way, right? Ooh, I got an idea. What if I put this through top hole and try to kind of connect them here. Alright. Does that work? 
Hello. Oh, it did not work. There were some of you out there that probably knew it wouldn't. <laughs> Let's try this again. Okay, so there we go. I also have to get this through a little bit. We'll make a sandwich. Come on, did you make it? Oh, you made it! Okay, so yes, this is the more correct way to do the diz. It's much easier. <laughs> Alright, so if you watched me do the diz the other way the whole time, shame on me. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's move this dude. These, let's look at this amazing, amazing, amazing. So it starts out blue, green, blue, green. Oh my gosh. I love this so much. I can't even tell you. And then it goes to kind of a, the light gray, and then the light gray, dark gray, and then the dark gray, and then the dark gray blue. Look at that! I made it! I made it! <laughs> made this one too. Let's roll it up. Actually, let's switch views. Very happy with this, right? Is that my inside piece? Oh, that's my outside piece. <laughs> very happy, very, very happy with this. And with this. So, um, while I roll this up, let me talk about what I learned in this process, okay? Here's what I learned. One, I didn't measure. The article Emily talks about measuring, like knowing how much her carter can hold and then planning out the fiber amounts and the bats to match that. I did not do that. And so, well, if you followed along, you saw what happened. Um, <laughs> I got my transition colors were the same amount of fiber as my main colors, which is okay. But if I wanted them just to be the blending colors, that didn't really happen. Um, also, my first bat where, where I stacked the colors, um, I didn't use enough fiber. So it was really thin and the layers were really thin and so I didn't feel like it worked as well. Uh, when I doubled that, the stacked bat was amazing. And then I took it off and it was excellent, but then I diz the next one and I just loved it so much. So here are my two awesome, right? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> I just think it's really fun because when we did that article, uh, Emily sent in her samples, right? And she sends the samples. She's really good about this. She sends the samples in every stage. So I don't have to do it to photograph it. I just use her samples in every stage. Um, and so it's really fun to follow the article, the instructions, mostly minus the measuring part, and come out with something that I love that like is the thing she was trying to teach us. So that was awesome. So tip number one, know how much your carter holds uh, and use that to uh, plan out the colors and how much co each color of each color is going to go in the bat and how much the bat is. Um, that's probably the main tip. Tip number two, do not diz like I did. Um, that was totally upside down. When I flipped it over at the end, so much easier. Um, yeah, so that was really fun. Uh, a couple observations. That takes a lot of time, like a lot of time. There's a lot of carding that went into that and like, I thought I could whip it out really quick before I picked up Zeke from school, but no, like he got home a while ago. Um, so I can understand completely, not that I didn't before, but understand completely how um, blended fibers, how people sell blended fibers and they seem really expensive, but man, it takes a lot of time. So it takes a lot of time. It's not nearly as easy as I thought. And um, lastly, what was my last observation? Hmm. 
oh, I know, um, that when you stack the bat, like it wasn't immediately apparent to me how I was going to make a bat that when I spun it would be a gradient. And so like the fact that she separates it into these little sections and then flattens those out is like brilliant. Um, yeah. And for real, my last observation is that, that was amazing. I'm totally going to spin it. And, um, you know, if that turns out, I'll show you guys. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining.